And Dr. Akela Ishaku, a virologist, joins us now for more on the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. I'd like to begin with last night's figures, almost 300 cases. Are we coming out of the fourth wave, do you think? Yeah, Melissa, I think um, we should not actually um, rejoice that we are coming out of uh, the pandemic because we need to equate the number of positive cases to the number of samples that we have tested. I can categorically tell you that in January, we have not tested enough samples uh, that a lot of states are not even, uh, you know, testing. So uh, I strongly believe that uh, for us to establish that the number of positive cases or the zero positivity uh, rate is dropping, it depends on the number of cases that we actually uh, undertake. Uh, I, I think uh, we need to encourage states to do testing and uh, by and large, that will be when we will establish that the number of cases are dropping. In terms of vaccination, we have states like Edo says it has expanded vaccination sites, yet still registering very low uptake. Um, we have states like Nasarawa that is leading, and that's the first dose, about 51%, followed by Jigawa, and a few southwest states. What do you think is, is still the big problem here with people coming to take their vaccine. And, and this is also taking the first dose and completing it as well before uh, the booster jabs. Yeah, I think kudos to Nusra State. That's my state, Melin said I'm from Nusra State. And uh, we, we, did, we did significantly well. Uh, what necessitated uh, Nusra State doing well is because a lot of stakeholders, you know, buying into this, uh, a lot of uh, faith-based organization, a lot of community leaders, ethnic leaders bought into the campaign. The reason why you see a lot of states are still struggling with COVID-19 vaccine is because of the associated fake news uh, and then misinformation that came with the vaccine. Uh, and I think that what we just need to do more is to actually step up our advocacy, our risk communication component, and then bring uh, have a coordinated stakeholders involvement. Uh, you know, in Abuja now, for you to enter into any government facility, you must present a COVID-19 vaccination card. And I think that uh, even today, I was barred from entering into the office because I left my vaccination card at home. I have to drive back to get my vaccination card and then before I got entry. So I think coming up with policies of no vaccination cards, no uh, entry, entry into any uh, big, uh, you know, uh, plazas, big corporate uh, institutions and organizations, that will go a long way to increase the vaccine uptake. But, you know, Nigeria has also bypassed most of these protocols. There are people that even borrowed cards from people. So government must also think of, you know, having a, a, a security around ensuring that people must take, uh, you know, vaccines before, you know, attending public functions and also getting into public offices. We also understand that, you know, in some places there are also apps that, that prevent that. But I want to quickly ask you um, the final question, and this is on herbal solutions for COVID-19. I know that there were a number of people who felt that there were some natural things that could be taken, uh, you know, to um, sort of distance themselves from, from getting COVID. Uh, are you a believer of such? And does it in any way help keep the virus at bay? Sorry, can you come again? In terms of herbal solutions to COVID-19? Yes. So, do you, you mean? Okay. Do you actually feel that there is truth uh, that some herbs can prevent one from contacting the virus? Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, uh, NAVDAC approved certain herbal uh, drugs uh, this January 2022 for the treatment of COVID. Those drugs have gone through a lot of um, efficacy validation tests. And for NAVDAC to say that such kind of drugs are okay, I, I think as, as a country, we can give it a trial. Why not we promote the made in Nigerian drugs uh, and then to see how we can also encourage our scientists. But I'm also glad to share with you that FDA has approved three antiviral drugs uh, for the treatment of COVID. But I think that we just, as a country, just need to go into small clinical trials. 
into the approved herbal uh, medicine, and then to see whether it is very efficacious. We can do that in our isolation centers and even for people that are positive. But I think that um, I want to suggest that we don't have the, the component, we did not approve the policy of self-testing. And I think that NCDC and you know a steering committee, presidential steering committee, should be able to come up with an algorithm for self-testing. Let us encourage people to do self-testing using the rapid diagnostic kits. Once we do that, we, we can be able to nip this in the books. It would also be good uh, to, to hear um, what NABDAC has to say, especially on you know the herbal solutions to COVID-19, if indeed there are any. But we appreciate your time. Uh, we'll have to leave it uh, there at this time. Thank you so much, uh, Kiala Shaku, a virologist. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me.